Okay, so we are live. Um, we're going to be having a look at uh, Drake Interplanetary today. Basically, the reason why this one isn't at the expo hall is because Drake got kicked out because they sell to pirates, and that's no go for the UEE, considering pirates are pretty much the enemy of everybody. So we're going to have a look as they are hosting their own show today at Microtech's new Babbage um, Starport. So let's go and have a look and see what they've got in store for us today. I think it's, it makes them more exciting. It does. I love how they've rolled out the red carpet. Yes. Defense Con. Ooh. They've called it Defense Con. That's cool. It is cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. After the fleet launches, who's left to protect you? Drake. Awesome. I can't get over the size of this place. This place is huge. The exposed beams and the kind of industrial but feeling fits so well with Drake and is so at contrast to the UE's perfect silver, uh, golden and dark blue and white marble. Damn. I really like the black and red theme. I'm not going to lie. I really like this. No, of course you do. <laughs> oh my god, like, wow. So we've got, like, all the cuties. The black, the red, the blue. So we'll, we'll start with the left hand side, and then we'll kind of work our way around, and then we'll go through the middle. Um, so this is the Cutlass Black. A beast of a ship. Um, it was my go-to for everything, up until they released the Mercury Star Runner. But this ship can do everything really, really well. If you want to do cargo, you can do cargo. If you want to drop your friends off um, into a hot zone, you can do that. If you want to hunt bounties, you can do that. If you want to go rock mining, you can do that. If you want to carry your race car around for a race event, you can do that. This thing can do so much. It's a beast. At 44 SCU of cargo, that's pretty cool. I mean, she's not going to win you any awards in cargo, but at least she's got something that you can play with. A decent sized cargo ramp to have easy access. V12 engines. The side access doors. For use in EVA or just getting out of the ship in a hurry. Really cool. Obviously you've got an airlock here that takes you into the main living quarters slash crew area of the ship. Really cool. A, a turret that takes you up to the top. And this thing packs serious firepower. Four size two weapons, also two on the turret, giving you a total of six size two weapons. And 16 missiles. This thing's no joke. However, mm. very lightly armored, uh, fully exposed engines, and the fact it only has one shield generator, a size 2, ha makes this thing very vulnerable, but she flies very fast. She's very nimble. And in the right hands, a very fierce target. So you obviously well, you've got your. Yeah. two weapons, though, in comparison to some of the other ships which have lighter. Yeah. What does the Mercury Star Runner have? Um, six size threes. Right. Um, but what you're talking about is a ship that's double the price. Fair. So could you upgrade the weapons on this ship? No, the you can only downsize them to size ones. Ah, I see. But this ship's a, a good starter. 
Um, I would say it, it's probably is one of the better ships. And at its price point, I would actually say it's arguably the best ship for its money. Because you're pretty much getting everything in a compact package for a very reasonable price. And I think that's a really good, solid investment if you want to get into this game and have a bit of everything. Yeah, how much is she? Um, I believe she's £110 with um, with a starter package, which will get you the right. game and the ship. But if you want to buy this on standalone, I believe she is £96. But right. a very, very nice ship. And with try landing gear, means that she can pretty much land anywhere without being topsy-turvy. Yeah. And I just love the way she looks. She is fierce. Very... Brutalist, very industrial. Yeah, yeah. Over here you have the Cutlass Red, which is a rescue ship. Okay. She's more like an ambulance, more than a medivac. Um, once again, you have the same sort of rear, but you have an extra an extra airlock door to secure inside the um, the occupants that might need medical attention with two medical beds. Right. I remember this now. Yep. On one of the first missions that you took me on, we, we used this ship. Yep. I now. Absolute great ship. Yeah. Once again, it, it is the Cutlass Black with a few extra features. Obviously, you've got the medibeds, beds, you've got the other uh, airlock, and you've also got... Um, Two airlocks on the sides, which you could couple to other ships eventually. Obviously, through here is exactly the same, but you have a toilet instead of uh, a top turret, I believe. Um. Looks like it. The co-pilot in this one actually manages the spotlight that's on the ceiling, um, just to help visuals on finding people. So you can actually set in a spotlight to help aid someone doing a ground search or to try and get a gist of the idea. Mm -hmm. does also come accustomed with flashing lights for use in emergencies only. And here you have a very, very unique ship. This is the Cutlass Blue. Now you can use this for legal services due to the fact it has re um, red and blue flashing lights. So this is more of a police ship, but also a great bounty hunting ship. And you'll see why when we go into the back of this one. So in the back of this one, once again, the same sort of airlock and airlocks on the side, but you have a total of 12 holding cells for be it bounties, criminals, whatever side of the law you want to go on. Um, you could probably even capture people and hold them for ransom or sell them to the highest bidder if they've done something wrong, like sort of treason and whatnot. But a really, really great, unique ship. And I love the look of this thing. But this is not in-game yet, is it? It is, yeah. Can... Um, you can capture people yet? We can't yet. I thought you were on about the ship. Um, so these oh, currently yeah. don't have gameplay yet. But, um, yeah. but it is looking like it's getting closer as they expand on the bounty hunting aspect of it. So she says a lot of similarities to the to the black as well. Um, yeah. Co-pilot doesn't do anything. You have a turret gunner, and obviously the pilot has the same amount of weapons. But it's a different loadout of weapons. They're more energy based on this one, whereas the other one they're more ballistic type weapons. The canopy on this one is a lot different as well, giving you a much open, a much more open field of view. With no up like obstruct obst uh, obstacles in the way, allowing you to see a lot more of what's around you. 
Mm. Yeah. Big shoot. Now this... A very, very, very fast ship. Not manoeuvrable by any stretch of the imagination. Trying to get her to turn is a whole different story, but if you're going in a straight line, you can pretty much outrun anything. Because this thing is basically a cockpit and a bed strapped to two giant engines. Yeah, she looks it. This is called the Herald. Now, she doesn't pack a great deal of firepower. Um... They're mainly just for defences, but I wouldn't even suggest using them in defence because these are size ones. Um, I believe that on the on the front is two uh, is a single size two. But she is a data runner. But you will also be intercepting data as well with this ship, meaning you can steal data from people and sell it to someone else. Close the door behind you. So, see, right. at the very back, we have a single bed. You have your toiletries and wash basin. On the other side, we have some sort of um, power generator for the servers. Over here you have your data management terminal, where you can intercept some of the data. Over here you have your various different server racks, which you will be able to put blades into. Once again, same thing on the other side over here. Just next to that you have your weapons rack. And at the front you have your cockpit. So, not a great deal to the ship, however, she will be playing vital roles, especially in org reconnaissance, taking data from certain people. Yeah. But, yes, a very, very nice ship. I love the way it's designed, I love the look of the interior. It's just a great all-round ship. The engines, I can't get over how big they are. Yeah, they are absolutely huge. So, into this small little room, we have the Dragonfly. There are two variants of this, you've got the standard Dragonfly and then you've got the Yellow Jacket. A very, very good Gravlev type bike which can be used across all terrain on all different plant services and also have a use in space. Whilst it doesn't pack a great deal of firepower to go up against ships, he has more than enough if you are trying to go against ground personnel. A very very sturdy craft and very very fast. And very fun to drive. Yes, it is an absolute blast to drive. I absolutely love it. I think the design on one of these is absolutely phenomenal. I love the whole aesthetics of it. I think we could save these till later. I'm I'm behind you. Oh hi. Over here on the other stand we have the Buccaneer. A serious amount of firepower. A great maneuverability of ship. Again, huge engines. But this thing is very weak in terms of armor and shields. Do not go starting a fight with something that can take a punch. Well, she can deliver a punch, you don't want to go up with something that can also return 
the kind of favor because this thing will be ripped apart unless you can keep out of the way of their blazing fire. It's not really a ship that I like. Um, aesthetically, I don't like it. I don't like how chunky the cockpit is, especially for the canopy. When you're sitting in it, it's not so bad, but there's just a lot of design aspects about the ship I, I really don't like. Huh. It's strange, because some of these same designs that you don't like in this one, you like in the bigger ships. Yes. Um, it's, it's more about the proportions with this one than anything else. Um, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't appeal to me. Do you know what it reminds me of? It what? reminds me of a sparrow. Hmm. The short, the short wings, the big head, and then if you come around to the, to the back and see these kind of tiny furrowed wings, like, at the tail end, it looks like a sparrow's tail. Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't know, I like finding comparisons to, to animals, I guess. Because most of them do look like animals. So, down this side we've pretty much got the same three ships. So we might as well just go and have a look at the Caterpillar, which is this large cargo hauler. I have seen it from the outside, I have not seen it from the inside. So the weapons on this ship are all size 4s. Yeah, what is weird is that is an MPC. Did we kill him? Uh, let's not worry. Nope, 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 nope we didn't. <laughs> so straight away, um, on the entrance elevator, we have right here a gun rack. And what looks to be like a drop zone, the seats behind you. In here is kind of um, the crew's habitational quarters as well as a mess hall of sorts. Through here, you come into the first cargo section. Each one of the each one of these has their own airlock, and of course, you've got a balcony which connects each, so you can actually walk along. Because once these are full, you can't get access to these. So this is the third one. So the main thing of this ship is just she's just a massive cargo hauler. Yes. Um, but she will have extra features in the future, and this is the front. Um, the extra features are like so these ramps will be able to go to the ground. Um, she also has tractor beams to help her load cargo in, um, and they have said that they will be releasing module parts for this, modular parts, so you will be able to attach other parts and take some of these cargo sections up and replace them with something else. Um, um, but that hasn't been confirmed as to what those are or what they do yet. So time will tell on that one. So this ship can carry a total of 576 SEO, which is a lot and was the most SEO a ship could carry up until the Mercury, no not the Mercury, the um, the C2 Starlifter came. So if you continue down this way, you come into the engine room and also engineering room. So on this side you would have an engineer uh, manage the subsystems of the ship. As you can see, you do have your engines. 
in this room as well, which I can guarantee this room is a lot hotter than what you can presently tell. You do have a service ladder, which takes you up to the top floor. I will show you the top of that later. In this room, this is where you would find the lower turret seat. Continuing around, we find ourselves a set of stairs leading up. Turning to our right, we have an observation deck. But you can also access one of the, um, the tractor beams from here as well. So you can visually see what you were loading in and out of the ship. Adjacent, well, actually, no, we'll, we'll continue into this area. In this, you just have a basic service corridor. In here is where you'd keep all of your um, ship data, um, logistics management, all that kind of things on your servers as well. Through here, you can finally see the, uh, the large power plant, which the ship uses. This is at the other side of that um, corridor. Continuing through into the back is where we find that um, service ladder that we spoke about before. As you can see, the engines are down there at the bottom. Not all the components in the ship have been physicalized yet. This basically takes you to another service ladder, which will actually take you to um, an airlock. If you continue along here, this takes you along the length of the ship um, through the cargo area, um, where you will be able to open the doors from the outside. Um, and if you continue on this to the very end, it will also take you up to a turret which is at the very front top of the ship. Yeah, there you are. Hello. So adjacent to the to the observation area, we come into a small ship. If you notice there is an airlock here, and that's because this ship is docked onto the side of the main cargo area. This is doubled up as the cockpit for the ship as well as the um, the caterpillar part of the ship as well when it is docked so all of the flight navigation is done here for both ships moving further back you will see you have two operators I can't remember if these are so this is a support role and this one is also a support role If you travel to the back of this small ship, you will go down another service ladder, which will take you into the the cruise quarters of the smaller ship. As you can see, another two beds. You've also got your um, your bathroom suite here. I do believe there is yes, there is a gun rack all the way over here as well, next to that ladder. Down here is where you would access it. Um, this one is also a tractor beam terminal as well. And this door on the left of the ship is how you would get in and out of this little ship if the ship was separated from the main cargo part. I see. Also, you've got another weapons rack here. So that's a total of three weapon racks for the ship. Um, over here, you'll have your kitchenette, be it very basic, but it's still better than nothing. And that's pretty much it for the caterpillar. Again, very brutalist. Yeah, very, um, very utilitarian.
I did not get lost. I did kind of. So I kind of want to have a look around the outside of this hole. I'm not sure if we are missing anything. I don't think we are. Um, I've already found out where the hollow suite is. Okay. But I just want to double check that we haven't missed anything. My guess is this hole is primarily what they use for something the size of like an 890 jump. Um, just given its length. For what, sorry? For the 890, the yacht. Oh, I see. Doesn't look like there is anything back here. Oh, there is a hollow table. Doesn't look like it's in use. There is another hollow table with an NPC back here. isn't anything there. I'll wait for you to catch up. Sorry. It's okay. It's more, diff it's more difficult to keep up with you now that I don't have your name to follow. I'm over to your left. Hi. So let's go and have a look at the hollow suite. Oh. And here we see the mighty Kraken. Kraken has been released, and that means one thing. There's no putting it back. This attack carrier has changed the way military operate forever. And when it comes to personal defense, there's one thing you never want to be. Falling behind. A protector and a beacon of freedom in an often cruel universe. Drake Interplanetary has made this capital class ship available to all those tasked with safekeeping those unable to protect themselves. The Kraken is both a sanctuary and a self-contained war machine, ready to take on the most daunting adversaries. That is awesome! It really is. And again, like, they're saying it's it's their slogan at the start of this of this hall and that everything they're like we're here to protect the little man yeah you know what if the navy goes off and does you know fights for politics who's left behind to to save the everyday people the ones that can't 
look after themselves, the ones that aren't trained to be military. Yeah. So Which is kind of a really cool way to look at it. It is, but at the same time, they are selling to the people that will use these ships against the little guy. Mm. Pirates would mainly look for the for the fat cats, for the people that actually have money, right? No. Pirates look for the people carrying the cargo for the fat cat. The little guy. The average guy earning, you know, his way through because he's not going to have big protection. He's not going to be a massive risk target. He's going to be an easy target to hit, and that's what pirates go for. So, there is another hollow sweet on the other side. Okay. Or at least maybe two. Here we have the vulture. A salvaging ship. like the way all of this is worded. There's no denying it. Winning can be messy business. When your fleet of Drake ships is done leaving, laying waste to the latest batch of outlaws who are foolhardy enough to tangle with you and your people, there's going to be no shortage of wreckage to wade through. That's where the vulture comes in. No need to leave behind a veritable junkyard around your station or homestead for criminals to use as cover next time they attack. The vulture can help you clean it all up and then some. Forget just clearing the way, salvage pays. What better way to defend yourself than to have the broken ships of your enemies pay for your next round of ammunition? Sounds like a fitting end to us. I like it. I like the way this is written. I like it. I might get myself one of these. Um, I think they're going for about £150 on the um, website. Right. Um, and I wouldn't mind testing out salvage, so I might actually pick myself one up. <gasps> oh, this ship needs no introduction. This is the Corsair. Probably their most hyped ship, apart from the Kraken. interplanetary know that sometimes defense isn't just about protecting what's yours. Sometimes it's about striking out and facing the unknown head-on. How can you ever be truly safe if you don't know what threat is waiting beyond the next mountain range, moon, or jump point? Thanks to a large hold capable of stowing a small vehicle and specially designed asymmetric convertible wings, the Corsair adapts gracefully to unfamiliar atmospheres, combat situations, and hot landing zones. Be ready for anything, and you'll never be caught on the bed. I do think I will be getting myself one of these. <laughs> I'm just compiling a wish list now. Um, I think she goes for £210, but she's been a ship I've been keeping my eye on for a long time. And she has almost the same amount of versatility as a Mercury Star Runner, but I also love the aesthetics of this ship as well. Mm. I do love the asymmetrical design, um, and I do like Drake ships. 
but this thing just looks cool and I love all of the specs about it as well. Yeah. So I do think I need to add one of these to to the fleet. I must say I'm not sure I like the asymmetric wings. They grow on you, don't worry. I hope not. <laughs> At least literally speaking. Who doesn't want to fly? Yeah, but I'd, 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 I'd like a choice on what kind of wings. Not... If someone said tom tomorrow I could fly, and I don't get a choice on what the aesthetics are of my wings, I think I'd be happy with it. Questions. So I do think that actually concludes the stream today. It oh, was, was, yeah, it was a short one, um, but I think we've seen everything. Well, it was very, very cool. It was, um. It's kind of nice to see them kind of do their own thing, considering the UEE kind of kicked them off the Invictus panel. But this was really, really cool. I'm glad to see what they've done with it. I'm loving the red and black theme. It is definitely very Drake, def definitely very rebellious. I love the whole atmosphere. The art team did a really good job with this one. Mm. So... Yeah, I think that's where we'll conclude it. So thank everyone for joining us on this um, this Drake Interplanetary Day. And uh, we'll catch you next time.